Hey, Nick, Mike Skeen here with Racers360. Thank you for sending in your video. Uh, looks really good for your first time at BIR, very impressive. Um, we'll go ahead and dive straight in and I'll show you a couple of things that I think can get you a little more speed next time out. Um, mostly down by the like Oak Tree, turn 11, 12 area, but uh, we'll just start at the beginning of the lap and go from there. Um, some of it is braking related also and how much pressure we're using and when and that sort of thing. Um, here at the start of the lap, you know, I'm assume maybe you were a little bit conservative going into one because you had the car ahead. You weren't sure how you know quick they would slow down, but um, a little bit early off uh, power and going to the brakes, and then light on the brake pressure. So you know, pretty early before the six coming off the throttle, and then our brake pressure we're looking at you know up into the two bar range. Uh, you know, I don't know exactly what unit this is, but from you looking at a bunch of these cars uh, with the GM performance data recorder we're usually seeing the higher brake pressures up around, you know, into the fourth bar or so, maybe even touching the fifth, depending on brake pads and tires and stuff. But even on stock tires, stock brakes, we're seeing more brake pressure and that'll uh, help with slowing the car down. So you want that initial peak of high brake pressure and then trailing off as some of the speed comes off. Um, that, you know, takes advantage of some of the extra grip because there is a little bit of arrow um, playing a factor, not much, but also with more momentum in the car, you're less likely to get into ABS. So we want to use the brakes really hard initially in that first third of the brake zone. And then as we start to get closer to the corner, we can kind of trail off the brakes a little bit more um, <clears throat> as some of that speed comes off. So we see, you know, pretty consistent one and a half ish bars of pressure going through the brake zone. Um, and then once we get down here towards our turn in, I would say you're a little bit on the later side turning in. Um, not too bad because that helps with getting the car pointed and straight off the corner. Doesn't look like the traffic hurt too bad. Maybe a little bit extra lift there um, and then setting up for two, but not too bad, I would say. Um, and well handled in terms of setting yourself back up and getting back on line two to three. Here, uh, pretty good with the brake pressure since it's cornering, you know, we're obviously going to have to sacrifice a little bit of pressure. Um, I would like to see maybe a little bit closer out to this turn in curve to set up a little bit wider arc at the apex and then getting down to where we touch that apex uh, curb a little bit more just so we're straightening the car off the corner a little bit. Um, if we can get, you know, two wheels up on that curb while we're kind of off throttle then the car is a little bit more pointed down the straight straightaway, even though it's a short straightaway. Um, and that helps us get full power a little bit sooner on the way out. I like that you're coming out, straddling the exit curb, all that's really good. Um, I'd like to see a little bit later on the brakes, uh, mostly so that we're later with the brake release. So the line and all through here is not too bad. Um, I like the, you know, you're kind of turning in, let the car slow down. Um, but we're picking up throttle just a little bit early. And that's because you had to come off the brake not to over slow the car. So what we really need is a little bit later on the brakes back in here, um, maybe a touch more peak pressure while we're still straight, but then trailing basically down at the apex. You may not be still on the brakes at the apex, but we don't wanna be you know, back to throttle so early. Um, that tip into throttle kind of hurts the last final little bit of rotation Still doing a pretty good job of, uh, you know, managing the exit and the line and all that, but we can carry a little bit more entry speed without sacrificing any mid corner exit if we're not back to throttle too early. Um, then on transition here, all this looks pretty good. I like the line, um, maybe a little bit inconsistent with the turn in. Um, so you start in a little bit early and then you, you can't keep the same steering angle. So if we just uh, walk it through a little bit and watch the steering angle over here, um, you see right in here, pretty good steering angle. You have to straighten up a little bit, you add back some and then you straighten up. So it's not like one consistent thing where we're building steering angle um, and then they're back to 30 degrees again, then back to 65, 70, 80. That's when we're adding towards our apex. So. What that should tell you is that when you first turn in here, you're a little bit early. And so then you straighten back up, you go another time at it, you straighten back up and you go a third time. And that's when you're kind of finally turning into the corner. So what we really want to do is be just a little bit later with our turn in so that we can turn in one time slowly and progressively um, rather than kind of taking a couple notches at it. 
Um, so just a, maybe a car length later here. So again, that we can make one consistent steering input down to the apex, get to the curb, uh, using good curb on the exit. So all that is pretty nice. We just wanna be a little more patient with our turn in. Likewise, up here, once we get to the uphill S is a little bit early turning in. You really don't wanna be on this first curb at all at turn seven. You wanna set up to be fully left after the curb. Um, that way we can set up our straight or our later apexes all the way up the hill. So the problem is when you're coming at this, let me get my little drawing utensil out. When you're coming at this curb, you know, fairly early, it wants to push you over to the next right-hander. If you're a little bit later coming in, you can hold this left right to the end of the curb and then turn more sharply uphill, obviously not to scale, but um, the idea is we want to be turning the car hard once we get to this uphill portion right here, um, because then that's where we have more grip in the car. So if we can stay later on the apex here, we're relying on more steering able to happen um, right as we get to that uphill portion. And then we're later apexing the top of the hill here, and we can continue carrying speed all the way up the hill. When you go in on this earlier line, now you're making it a tighter turn at the crest of the hill where you have less grip. Um, and then you're a little bit offline setting up the next two. And so you have to shed speed all the way up the hill. Let me clear those off and we'll go through the rest of this. So again, now you're trying to turn the car pretty hard still right as you're starting to get to the crest and it's putting you too early to the next left-hander here. Same thing where we want to be a little bit later on this hill. So rather than coming straight at the first apex here and it wanting to spit you off to the right, we wanna be just a few feet over, later apexing, getting to the final bit of this curb and then turning in to the right-hander at nine. Um, so again, this is the key spot right at the end of the curb where the grass ends. So you can still be on the curb some, but you want your left side tires coming off right at the end and still fairly parallel, You know, still turning the car a little left so that you're getting the car more mid-track to turn in for nine. All right, so then once we get here, rather than spitting the car and, and turning the car kind of a second time later um, and having to slow the min speed down, you're already placed there and ready to get back. I'll go look at that again, just to show, point it out. So you're getting on the curb early and although you're still able to, get the car over by slowing it down more, the car is naturally wanting to go more mid track and you still are turning left, um, you know, after you get off the curb and then it's, you're kind of later to transition to the right here. And so all of that extra steering in the middle is what's slowing down our min speed and not letting us carry speed up the hill. I would expect, you know, we're seeing 111 here, you know, even if it's not exactly right, uh, I would say probably another 10 or 15 miles an hour is probably the potential of the car through here. And all of that is just by setting up the later apexes at the bottom so that as it gets tighter, we're keeping the car straighter. You know? So at the bottom of the hill where it's a little more open, we want to set up the late apexes so that up here as it tightens up, we're keeping the car more straight and keeping our minimum speed a little bit higher. And then I like that you're getting over right, setting up for 10. That's very critical. Turn in here looks pretty reasonable. Um, maybe could use a little bit more track out, but close enough. That looks pretty good. Um, up here, though, I think is one of the sections where you're really hunting around, still not quite finding the line. And so we'll talk about this kind of from the beginning. Um, when I come out of 10 here, I hustle the car over left a little bit earlier so that I'm getting parallel and turning in earlier. Um, let me inch it forward just a little bit. So actually maybe a bit far, just to give a general overview. So the idea here is rather than driving kind of straight towards the one or the arrow board and then turning, we want to get over to the right or sorry, to the left a little bit earlier, and then we can angle the car a little bit sooner so that we're using the elevation change right in here where it's steeper for both heavier braking, but also starting an earlier turn in so it's not as sharp. When you go way down here and then turn, it's really sharp right up in here, and you can't carry a lot of entry speed through the first apex of 11. 11 is all about entry speed, and then 12 is all about exit speed. Um, and so if we can start our earlier turn in with slower hands and a little bit less steering angle, we we'll keep the car more straight all the way through. Um, and then let me 
inch it up here. So once we're getting up here, you're turning the car really sharp right in this area. Uh, you know, you're kind of coming in like this, turning really sharp and going that way. I've already started bending the car in from way back here. I'm going much more straight towards this apex and letting it go out towards our turn in of 12. Um, and so all the way through here, I've got the steering much more straight, whereas you're going in here, turning really tight in this area. And so you have to slow down the car more because you're turning the car much earlier in this whole sector. Um, and so then your minimum speed is low and you're just kind of coasting and the, you know, the speed feels like you're ready to turn in for 12, but you can't accelerate yet. And so you're kind of in this no man's land where you have to just kind of maintain a little bit. you got a little partial throttle um, and then you're just coasting. You're back to throttle early. You have to back off throttle. You know, so you're, you're kind of in and out of the throttle a lot um, and that moves weight back and forth. And it also, uh, because your speed is down low kind of early, you end up turning in early because you feel like, oh, the car is, you know, at the speed I need to go, I might as well turn. Um, we really want to go a little bit deeper in here to overemphasize a late apex and get onto the straightaway. Um, so you're kind of starting to bend the car in something like this. We want the car to be going out to the outside, then turning sharp right in here. So you do a lot of steering here and then you're kind of done. You're, you're starting to open the wheel back up and add throttle. But when you start this early turn in, then you have to add steering right back in here when you get towards the apex because you're a little early. Um, and so then you have to back off the throttle and you're late to really commit to full power. All right, so straighter through 11, that gets us out here. That sets us up for a heavier later turn in for 12, but it gets us back to full throttle and straightening sooner. Um, again, so your trajectory, once you get to the apex here, is because you're coming a little late, you've already got the car turned, you're starting to straighten it up instead of now where you're trying to pinch the car around the apex a little bit. Um, and that hurts getting back to power through the exit. Um, up here at 13, 14, seemed like you were a little bit early on the brakes. You actually get back to the gas a little bit um, through the middle of where we'd want the brake zone to be. Um, so we need to be later on the brakes. Also remember that heavier initial pedal pressure. So right in here, there you're getting into the third bar of braking, but you're early. So then you go back to throttle right in here and then a brake a second time. So what we really want to do is make all of that one brake zone. The, the line looks okay, but um, we want to be later with the initial brake so that we break all the way through that little left kink and lengthen our straightaway as much as possible. Uh, then down through here, line looks pretty reasonable, no big complaints. And likewise, pretty good through here. Could use a little bit more curve on 16 there just to straighten it out, but overall fairly nice through hog pin. Um, let me just back it up, point out what I was talking about. So this curb here could just be up on top of it a little bit more in order to straighten out your brakes in here, maybe be a little bit later on the brakes by doing that. Um, and then by carrying more momentum down the hill, when the car gets down to the bottom here, it should wanna be over more on the left, just because of this momentum, same steering inputs and everything. If you have a little more speed, the car's gonna wanna go out to that left side rather than being kind of tight in here, a little bit more center track. We shouldn't really have inside tires on that lighter gray. You wanna be fully out onto that um, sealer patch on the outside. You may not be completely to that curb on the left, but fully on the left side of the track and then through the exit, it looks just fine. So hopefully those things will help. I think again, priority will be that whole 11, 12 area. That's the biggest chunk of time. Then probably second to that would be brake zones at turn one and 14. Um, and then just clean up some little detail stuff. But for first time out, awesome, looks really good. As you said, I know you were fighting a lot of traffic, so probably not a whole lot of consistency and opportunity to work on everything, but best of luck next time out. Let us know how all that goes. I uh, hope we can help you again. Thanks.